let's say we have a frequency table given a group frequency table again with marks and number of students who have obtained each of those marks okay marks range so 0 to 20 there are 7 students 20 to 30 there are 10 students 30 to 40 again 10 students and so on we have this table let's try to draw the histogram what is going to be on the x-axis x-axis is the variable being measured correct what is the variable being measured marks so on the x-axis we have marks so let's say this is 0 this is 20 30 you need to draw it to scale right 40, 50, 60, 70, and then 100. The last group is 70 to 100. Y axis is your frequency or the number of students in each mark. Let's draw the bar now. 0 to 20, 7 students. 20 to 30, 10 students. 30 to 40, again 10 students. 40 to 50, 20 students. And so on. 70 to 100, there are 8 students. Okay? Now, let's do one thing. Look at these two rectangles. Look at the rectangle 20 to 30. And look at this rectangle 70 to 100. We said the areas of the two rectangles should represent the number of students. The areas of the two rectangles should represent the number of students. Out of these two rectangles, which has the greater area? Clearly this one. You pick this rectangle and put it on this. You can clearly see that it's more, right? Visually, you can see this has a greater area. But actually, if you look at the number of students, in the 20 to 30 range, there are 10 students. And in the 70 to 100 range, there are only 8 students. So this is not correct, right? The 70 to 100 rectangle should have actually had a smaller area. Why is this happening? Why is it not correct? The key difference here, if you look at these rectangles, all of them don't have the same width, right? All of them don't have the same width because your class interval is different for each of the classes. The first class is a range of 20, right? The second one is 10. Third one is 10. 10, 10, and the last one is 30, correct? So the first one is 20, everything in between is 10, and the last one is 30. So what is happening is, when we draw this rectangle from 70 to 100, the width is 30, so the width is 3 times, and then we are taking the frequency of 8, which is why the answer we are getting is wrong. It's not representative of the area, correct? So what you draw on the y-axis is not directly the frequency. In a histogram, what you draw on the y-axis is not directly the frequency, but you need to divide the frequency. So here, the width of this rectangle is 3 times. The width of this rectangle is 3 times the normal. Let's say the normal width I take as 10. Pick the lowest one of these. That is 10. So if I, that was the width of my 20 to 30 bar, right? 10. Now if I take this 10 here, in 70, this 10 is coming 3 times, right? So the width is 3 times. So I need to make the height 1 third. So that the area still remains the same. What is happening is I've taken the width as three times and I've still taken the height as the entire frequency. That is not true, right? Because height does not represent number of students. Area needs to represent number of students, which is why if width is three times, then we need to make the height one third. So because width is three times here, we'll make the height one third. So instead of drawing eight, we'll draw eight by three. Similarly, in the first bar zero to 20, the width is twice, correct? If I take the minimum width of the bars is 10, so this is twice that, so height should be half. So instead of 7, what you'll draw is 3 and a half, correct? Because 0 to 20 is actually double the range. What this implies is that if there are 7 people in 0 to 20, I expect 3 and a half people in 0 to 10 and 3 and a half people in 10 to 20. That is why we make it half. Because everywhere else, our range is only an interval of 10, 10 marks. Otherwise, it's not comparable, right? It's not fair to compare 20 to 30 with 0 to 20. Because if you were to say that, you know, these were all people, each person gets a group and whichever group has the highest frequency wins. Then if you were assigned the 20 to 30 group and somebody else had 70 to 100, you would say it's not fair, right? Because 70 to 100 is a larger range. If you have a larger range, obviously you'll get more number of students, correct? Which is why it's not a fair comparison. So what this means is that 0 to 20, the frequency is 7. What I expect is 0 to 10, it will be 3 and a half. 10 to 20, it will be 3 and a half. Might not necessarily be true. Maybe there are 0 people who got 0 to 10 and everybody got between 10 to 20. But that conclusion we cannot draw based on the data given to us. Correct? We assume that it is all equally divided. Similarly, 70 to 100, the size or the width of the range is 3 times. So 
If I divide it into three parts, each of those parts will have one third, one third, one third. Correct? In the entire range there are eight people, seventy to hundred. So within seventy to eighty, there'll be eight by three. Eighty to ninety, eight by three. Ninety to hundred, eight by three. That is what it means, dividing by three. That's the reason we divide it by three. Correct? Mathematically, when you have to draw the histogram, the method is simple. We found all the class intervals. Divide each number. Divide each of the class intervals by the minimum class interval. So in this case, the minimum class interval is ten. So in the first case, I'll do twenty divided by ten. That is two. Ten by ten is one. Ten by ten is one, and so on. Finally, I'll get thirty by ten is three. Correct. And what I draw on the y-axis is in the first case seven divided by two, ten divided by one, ten divided by one, and so on. Finally, for seventy to hundred, what I draw on the y-axis is eight divided by three. Correct. That's how you get your histogram. That's how you get your histogram. Very easy to plot when all the class intervals are equal. When all the class intervals are equal, the y-axis is nothing but directly the frequency. When they are not equal, you need to adjust for the width. Correct? Because area represents number of students.